Hey guys, my name is Marta, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about the Blue Clerk by Beyond Brand. This is that the subtitle of the book suggests an arts poetica in 59 verses and it is a piece of prose poetry. The book doesn't really have a plot but it is basically a conversation between a poet and, and this other version of her and some sort of double of her that she names the clerk which is basically her rational persona that helps her give sense and meaning to her creations this double conversation that these two personas of this one same person have is one that deals with many different topics all of which having to do with being an artist, a poet, and someone who is constantly dealing with words. Despite the fact that the book really talks in depth about the struggles of creating, the struggles of expressing oneself and giving meaning to stories, the book is not only about that and creation as a thing is not the sole topic you can find in this book. The author also discusses other themes and other issues that have to do with the creative world, such as translation. In fact, language takes a very important part in the book and the limits between language, different languages and how the mean different meanings and conveyed in each of the languages is a topic that is discussed in depth in the book. The book really talks, talks about the struggle at the same time about how sometimes feelings are not as easy to convey in one language as they are in another one. But creation, creativity, languages and things that you normally associate with being a poet or any sort of writer are not the only ones that are dealt with in this very short book. The author also discusses other things that are of much interest nowadays, for instance, the individual and the individual in society. The book reads and um, really puts a lot of emphasis on solitude and solitude in big cities as well as everyone's need to constantly move and constantly do something to find oneself. The book is a some sort of travel, some sort of voyage and not only physical but also mental when it comes to the poet's journey to write the book that she is writing. The book then also talks a lot about cities, about how cities and different spaces one finds oneself in interact with one's persona and how you can extract some meaning from them. Similarly, the book also deals with cultures and different and how different cultures may clash, as well as it explores different writers, philosophers, and any sort of thinker from not only different nations but also different times. In fact, Plato is as is mentioned as many times as Borges. But going back to the book's main topic, which is that of artistic creation, the book also deals with different ways of creating, different ways of finding inspiration, some of which are more traditional than others. And uh, For instance, we might find lists in fact, many lists make up different little prose poems of the book, as well as you might also find deep conversations on what 
is poetry and what is one supposed to convey with their poetry. I am going to just read a quote that I just find and underline to show you how this book deals with poetry and the meaning of poetry in society, not only in the present times, but also in the past. This is the conservative line of poetry to stay away from politics, to stay away from intervening in the everyday except sooth, sage, bring good tidings, observe beauty, give light when all is dark, assure us that we are benevolent and good at the core, lift us from the daily troubles of the world, elevate our molecular concerns or parochial individual lives to the level of art, convince us that we are not petty and ridiculous and brutal as declared. And brutal, says the author, and brutal as the clerk, and we are tied to some universal good, some deep knowing. And yeah, that is just an example of how the book deals with what poetry is supposed to do and how it has been treated through time, how it has sometimes been interpreted as this political weapon other times as this mere beautiful idealized thing in which someone might find solace. The book also deals with other struggles that an artist may come across in their creative career. For instance, the struggle to write, the struggle to always be perfect, to make every piece, every little creation as good as possible as well as other more general topics that are usually found in literary discussions on creators and poets and any sort of writers. For instance, the topic of the solitary poet, which is very much dealt with in this book, since we have the clerk who is isolated and who because of his solitude, because of his detachment from the real world, is capable to give sense and give meaning to what the poet writes. Now, briefly, staying away from the themes that are discussed and that I have must discuss already, I wanted to briefly talk about the writing style of the book. Dion Brand's writing style is very beautiful. He's a poet and you can tell that you can tell that he is a very good one from the way he writes. Her prose poems and her most experimental things such as the lists all read very beautifully. Some of them are really able to make you visualize the thing he is describing. The book is also very interestingly crafted since from it being a conversation between these two voices you could expect any page to be a person and the other's answer and it is one and then it is not. In fact, the conversation is placed inside a main paragraph and sometimes it takes a while to fully see who is. But Overall, reading this was an amazing experience. I really enjoyed it. I underlined quite a few lines and I personally can see myself going back to this very short piece of essay-like fiction. I don't even know how would I describe this because this book is overall one of those experimental pieces of literature that are very in right now that mix say with poetry, with fiction, and that create this special type of story Very that is a lot of fun to read. The book is, however, not that original and trying to be critical, I have to say that the book is not perfect. Some of the points that are talked about feel a bit repetitive and sometimes some pages might drag a little bit because you are too tired of reading about these two people discussing the same things over and over again. 
but overall it was a really enjoyable experience. We'll most likely pick up something else by the own brand in the future and I highly recommend this book if you like if you like to read essays, if you like to read autofiction probably because this personally reminded me a lot of Natalie Sarrot with his little pieces of fiction and with this conversation with her other self and it also reminded me quite a lot of Anne Carson. I don't know why, but it gave me Anne Carson vibes. I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed it, as I have already said. Um, yeah, I want to read a quote, if I can find a pretty quote, to end up this video. Yeah, I want to read this one because it really talks about how to find beauty in little things, in the ordinary, and I personally really like it. This is Verso 3.4 and it says, in this city you fall in love at Chester's subway. It's not a beautiful subway, your love makes it so, but its ugliness may doom your love and you know it, but you love anyway. Yeah, pretty about finding love in the ordinary, which is something that we all have to learn to do in this modern world. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you read The Blue Clerk, comment down below what were your thoughts on it. Comment down below any book that you have read that is similar to this. I personally heard about this book in Eric Carl Anderson's book about books similar to After Sappho, which I read in the summer, and which I will link my review of down in the description in case you want to check it out. And um, yeah. Comment down below if you read anything else by the own brand. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!